Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here and welcome to the Canon R5C for video production training series. This is part two of an overview of the camera system where we're talking about the camera body, assignable buttons, menu systems, and a lot of other stuff related to the video mode of the camera. So let's get started. So now we're going to talk about ABB or automatic black balance, which is a feature that is, in my opinion, very important in the camera system and something you should be thinking about as a checklist item when you're in production. So whenever you're in a production and you're starting the production, you're midday in the production, or when temperatures change drastically in a production, it's really important to perform an automatic black balance. What we're doing is we're taking that digital sensor and we are calibrating it to a black level so that it is consistent for your shoot. So all you have to do is put a body cap on the camera system. You'll go into this six page of camera setup and you'll choose ABB, press set. It'll tell you to put a body cap on there. You go OK and it will go through the process of automatic black balancing the camera. It's a relatively short process. Again, it should be something you do at the beginning of a shoot. And it's also something that we like to do whenever we're changing environments. Of course, real world production is real world production. So if you can't do it, you can't. But if you have a few minutes before you start rolling again, it's a really good idea to do that. Then I would turn the camera off and then you can lens your camera again. Now we're going to talk about the focus guide, which is in the first page of assistance functions. And it's one of my favorite features that Canon has introduced into their cameras. And it's nice to see it here in the R5C. So we're going to make sure that focus guide is on. And this is something that you're using with manual focus on the camera. So I'm going to go over to the camera body and switch off AF. And then when I step out of here, we'll see this little box here that I can move around either with the joystick or with the touch screen. And let's just go over here and I'm gonna take the focus ring here on the camera and just start to turn it. And you'll see that we have three arrows. The arrow that is facing either down or up, the single arrow, is the place that we want to match up the other two arrows. So for instance, right now, we are focused closest to camera on that Canon AE-1. And you'll see that the bottom arrows are facing out, which means I need to take the lens ring here for focus and turn it to the left until we snap into focus. If I now touch on the AE-1, you'll see that those little focus arrows are on the outside on the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it to the right until I get critical focus on whatever I want to focus on. So that's the focus guide, which is one of my favorite features to use in the camera when shooting manually in terms of focus. And then under assistance functions, you'll see there are a lot of other parameters we can set having to do with peaking, magnification, false color, zebras, waveform monitor, markers, and other things that just allow you to customize the camera to the way you like to shoot and that will assist you in shooting your projects. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and move over to the assignable buttons menu, and we're gonna talk about all of those 13 assignable buttons and how you can change them to customize the camera for you. And I have this one over here on the back right of the camera, which is by default set to auto iris or a push auto iris, and that's not a feature that I would use in the camera on a regular basis. So I'm gonna go down to assignable button number five. I'm going to select that and you'll see that we have all of these choices in terms of what we can now tell that button to do. I'm gonna actually choose waveform all and step out of the menu. And when I press that button, we'll see the waveform monitor show up on the screen. So it's a very fast way for me to take a look at my exposure values and then turn them off with that assignable button. And what I want to now talk about are the direct touch controls on the camera because they're very handy when you are in production. As you already know, this is a touch screen. And down here on the bottom left is sort of the key to the castle here for these controls. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on the screen. 
And then what we'll see are a lot of options that show up here on the bottom of the screen, but we also have another option here on the top left. So here on the bottom, we can tap here and we can change our white balance settings on the camera system. We can change very quickly and easily our aperture, our ISO, and also our shutter. And then down here on the bottom right, we have a menu that shows up which to me is really, really handy in production where we can turn things on and off very quickly and easily. We can turn on zebras here. We can turn on and off our focus guide, which we talked about earlier on. We can turn on and off our peaking features, which you can set inside of the menu in terms of what color and intensity you want your peaking to be. We can turn on and off false color and then if we're shooting in log and we have that flat image, we can quickly and easily switch between our log or raw recording view or a view assist. And then up here in the top right, we have two options for what they call waveform. But the waveform monitor is the first option. And then the second option here is a vector scope, which has to do with chroma or color information in your captured image. Let's go back to the waveform monitor and take a look at that. And you'll see there's a little left arrow up here on the top. And we can switch between a right side of frame or left side of frame for the waveform monitor. We can also tap on the waveform monitor and it will actually go to a 2x size, which is very, very handy if you really want to see your exposure values. And then again, tap again to that smaller one. Why would we want to switch the waveform monitor? Well, very oftentimes, when we're shooting interviews, we'll frame talent to the right side of the frame or the left side of the frame. And if we want that waveform monitor to be up, this would be somebody left side of frame. Let's say you had somebody on the right side of the frame, you would switch the position of the waveform monitor. There are also more options inside of the menus in terms of opacity, and you can customize this a little bit more, but it's a fantastic feature in the camera. So the last thing I want to do is talk about the recording settings with direct touch controls in the camera. We've already talked about all of these options down here, but in the top left, we can tap and access without menu diving all of these options. So for instance, I can change my sensor mode and I can go from full frame to super 35 millimeter cropped. You can see that my field of view has changed. We have more reach because we're cropping into the sensor. Another advantage to that super 35 millimeter cropped is you could use APS-C or super 35 millimeter lenses with the camera. And then I can step out of there and go to full frame. If we go into recording mode, we have all of these options having to do with recording modes without, again, menu diving too deeply in the camera. So we can go ahead and change from normal recording to, let's say, pre-recording, which would be caching constantly so that when you press record, it will make sure you're not missing a particular shot, that whale cresting the ocean, for instance. And then we have frame recording for stop motion type applications, interval recording for time lapse applications. And then we have our slow and fast motion and our slow and fast clip with audio options inside here as well. And then over here, we have a really nice feature, which is we can decide what's being recorded to card one, our CF Express type B card, and to card two, which is our SD card. So for instance, when we're taking a look at this and we set it to one main two sub record and I go to the second page, we can set up how we're recording to the CF Express card. And then we can go to the third page and decide how we're recording to the SD card. What's nice about this feature is that unlike just a straight proxy, we can get a better quality recording to the SD card. So there you have it. That is part two of the overview of the R5C where we got into camera controls and the menus and really key features related to the video mode of the camera. Be sure to check out the other videos in the series if you haven't already. They dive deeper into other particular features of this, including going on location with the R5C and using it in real world production environments. The goal as always is education. So thanks for watching.